Hello, hello, true seekers all over the world. This is Matthew Beavers with Back to the Covenant. Hope you have an amazing day wherever you're at in the world or evening, depending on when you're watching this or listening to it. So this is going to be episode number three of Journey to the Truth interview series I'm doing. And I'm blessed to have Mikey from Little Light Studios. What's going on, brother? What is up, man? Thank you so much for having me on the show, man. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. This is awesome. And this is actually a really cool interview because we literally met a week ago at a Sabbath hey. meetup local for us, probably a little closer for you, but it was worth the drive for us about an hour. And so we, I was able to hear your, some of your testimony and you were able to hear some of my testimony. So it was really cool and meet in person. So if you're ready, I'm going to fire some questions at you. You ready? And that was really cool. That was church right there, man. Yeah, that was, that was a, would you call it a taste of heaven or something? A messenger? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that was a good way to describe it. So if you're ready, I'm going to hit you with some questions. Sounds good. All right. So since I heard your testimony last Sabbath, I, I would love for you to share some of that on this interview just to, so it'd be a blessing to other people because you have a powerful testimony, brother. Let me tell you. All right. Do you want the like the condensed or the <laughs> <laughs> hour long, 20 minute long? Definitely not hour long. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just try to give it. And bite so, size, I guess. Basically, you know, I, I was raised in a Christian home, a Baptist home. And um, over the years, we kind of started venturing out into the more charismatic word of faith churches where there's a lot of shouting and uh, healing. Yep, and, yep. And all that <laughs> stuff, you know, mega churches and things like that. And uh, at around age nine, I remember I was alone in a car while my mom was inside the church doing a, a transcribing for the pastor. And while I was out there, I was just really thinking about my life and stuff at nine years old. But I really was like, I reached this age of accountability. I realized like, there's nothing I can do to earn salvation. Like I realized like mm. I need a savior. And so right then I accepted Christ and um, I even teared up and I told my mom when she came out and she was all happy. And then uh, <laughs> a few weeks later I got baptized and I started going to youth groups and we were like, I was at this real rowdy church. So we were like mosh pitting. To oh my gosh. Stuff, man. And like, <laughs> but you know, I was surrounded by, by Christians and I was surrounded by people who were going on mission trips and doing all these things. Mm. But by age 12, I started having these real skeptical thoughts. Um, Christians didn't have good answers for my tough questions. And I've always been intrigued with the paranormal, always interested in ghosts and aliens and UFOs. I was checking out books at the public school library about, you know, photos of ghosts and aliens and things. Huh. And uh, I was just really intrigued with that. Christians didn't have good answers. And so I started going down the road of the occult. I, I basically thought Christians were really narrow minded. They didn't really know what they believe. There's so much out here in the world that they can't explain. And I thought any, it seems like anytime I bring up something taboo, it must be the devil. Like, Yep. What's wrong with the Ouija board? Well, it's just weird. I don't know. You shouldn't mess with it. And nobody had like the answers. So I started going down that road and um, it all started though, or it kind of started when I started watching MTV and stuff like that. Cause my parents mm. would try to protect me from like, don't watch MTV and don't play violent video games. And now <laughs> yeah. I'm in a ministry that talks about the power of media. And I, I can testify that media can definitely change your your world view your mindset oh yeah so i started seeing mtv where you know everybody's partying at the beach it's spring break girls in bikinis everybody's getting drunk they're hooking up and i'm like wow yep. that looks fun you know so i and then one day i saw marilyn manson on the screen and i was like like i want to be just like that guy and hmm. so when i'm going down this road of the occult uh I, I met a friend and we started making music together as like this gothic industrial music, like Marilyn Manson and Nine Inch Nails. Huh. And I, I wanted to be as blasphemous as possible. I wanted to be shocking and wow, and all that. And, um, but that road just was empty and hopeless, man. Like no matter, I, I was plagued with the thought of what is this life all about? What is, why am I here? Like if I be the, if I become the biggest rock star, a rocket scientist, or a jailbird, what's the difference? Huh. One day I'm going to die and not exist and be forgotten. So what's, what's this even, you know? And then I was like, well, 
that's pretty depressing. So I'm just going to think I got one life to live. So let's live it up. So mm. I kind of started the whole YOLO thing before it was <laughs> a known thing, but basically YOLO just means filling all the desires of your lustly flesh, mm. uh, fornicating, getting high, getting drunk. And so that's how I lived for many years of my life. And then my parents got divorced. And so we were living in South Georgia at the time, but when my parents got divorced, me and my dad wanted to move back to Chattanooga, Tennessee, where I live now. And my cousin drove five hours to, to help us move because he had a truck. And I heard him and my mom talking and they were sharing each other's testimonies. Now, when my mom used to share her testimony with people that would give her the opportunity, that was something great for her. And for me, being full of these demons, dude, I, it made my skin crawl. Every time she would talk about her testimony, I'd just be like, oh, here she goes again. Yeah, I believe it's possible. So it, it, she was uh, forced this fear-based stuff all her life. She was told, if you don't say this little prayer, you're going to burn forever and ever and ever. Mm. And, um, and she saw a little girl that was burned in a house fire, and she said it was scary to her. It looked, you know, the girl looked monstrous, and, and the girl went through – pain even even healed those scars that still hurt and stuff and my mom was terrified and every night when she'd go to bed she'd just say uh lord come to my heart because i don't want to die and go to hell and she'd be like whoo i hope that worked and it was like her whole motivation for accepting christ was i don't want to burn forever wow it was all fear-based and and christ gets no pleasure out of fear-based conversion oh my he, he wants friends. He created people to have free will and to love him and accept him um, out of that free will, not out of, you know, bow or burn for eternity. That's not really free will. Yep. So it, it took my mom be, to becoming an adult to understand why she, why she started really seeking God. Like, I don't, I don't want this fear-based thing. And so she started, um, visiting with my uncle a lot and he was reading the bible to her and when he read believe in all things are possible to him that believeth mm -hmm. she, he, he just kept reading he was just reading verses and she goes whoa whoa stop what was that verse you said and he said it i can't remember that i can't remember the reference but he said it it says believe in all things are possible to him that believeth and she said it was like my uncle tuned out like a radio in the background and suddenly god showed her like a vision of a dictionary and it's like the left page and it's like the bottom of the column and it just said like this perfect definition of believe that made sense to her huh. she said, i can believe you know so that was her testimony and i as a kid i got her this magnet that said that verse and it, it was on the fridge and and so i'm here my cousin who i looked up to my cool cousin i hadn't seen in a couple of years is now saying he's a christian i'm like mm, that's kind of intriguing so i'm driving or I'm in the uh, truck with him driving home or driving to where we're moving to. And he's got me for five hours, man, in this small truck, just me and him. <laughs> got he's him. Trying, <laughs> yeah. He's trying to reach me where I'm at. And he knows I'm into this witchcraft and everything. And he's like, man, I'm telling you, he said, dude, I know where you're at. He's like, in, in, the, in this book, it's got all the answers in it, man. He said, I'll just sit there and I'll fast and I'll just read. And he's like, it's the whole atmosphere around me just changes. And I see miracles happen. And he's like, it's kind of like that magic stuff you're into. Like I read it and I see miracles happen. You know, it's trying to reach me where I was at. Yep. That I makes sense. Like, yeah. I was like, all right, man, I'll give it a shot. Cause I realized in that moment that I was doing exactly what I hated that was done to me. I had, I had friends whose parents would judge me by my appearance because I looked like Marilyn Manson. They would say they, they didn't want their kids hanging around me. And I'm like, why are they judging me by the way I look? You can't judge a book by its cover. And yet I was judging yep. God by every hypocrite that stood behind a pulpit or sat in the pews. And I, I never read his word for myself. Mm. And so I began to just start reading his word and, and I was mind blown at how interesting it was. I was like, wow, this book, I've never heard these stories and stuff. And so I started putting God to the test. I'm like, okay, my cousin said that you answer prayers. Uh, I want to get a job at hot topic. <laughs> I wanted to work. Was, to me, that was like my dream job. Like, I don't have to wear a uniform. I can have all my piercings and everything. Are your tats? Yep. And so uh, I, I xeroxed my application ten times, and I turned it <laughs> every day for ten days. I just like boom, boom. Wow. And, uh, 
the thing is, is you don't get that job unless you know somebody because there's a lot of weirdos that want that job. And uh, I think I probably just was annoying them by giving my application every day. <laughs> but I was praying for that job. And I actually, my, my cousin's sister was letting me and my dad stay with them until we could get on our feet. And my dad already got a job as a Krispy Kreme truck driver. And I had three different interviews that I walked out of because I said I couldn't wear my piercing. Huh. So my cousin and her husband sat me down and said, look, we're trying to help you get on your feet and you're walking out of interviews. Like your dad's already got a job. Like you're going to have to just do what you got to do. So I put on a college shirt, took out all my piercings and went down this long stretch of, of road that has all these businesses on it. And the last place I went to was called Smoky Bones restaurant. And this girl, the assistant manager had, uh, saw the lip or saw the holes in my lip. She was like, you got lip rings? I said, yeah, you know, had to take them out, get a job working for the man. She goes, oh. she goes, I understand. And she flipped out a septum piercing. She had that center of her nose and she had it flipped up in there. And so there's like a connection there. And she was like, come back tomorrow. I want to introduce you to my general manager. So the next day I got the job. Um, that wasn't the job I wanted. It wasn't the job I was praying for. But in conversation with this lady after the, you know, the next few days or weeks or whatever that I was working there, I told her, I was like, yeah, I really wanted that, a job at Hot Topic, but they just seemed like they never want to hire me or anything. She goes, my best friend's the manager over there. Mm. I was like, what, dude? What? <laughs> Big coincidence, right? Like, that's when I realized that God's not some magical genie that's like, I pray for a car and open my eyes and it materializes right in front of me. You know, it's like he is actually orchestrating your life before you even pray that prayer. He's guiding your path and putting yep. you where you need to be. And it's like this domino effect that just blew my mind because after working at Smoky Bones for three months, I got the job at Hot Topic because of this job that I didn't want to be at. And then Three months later, I became the assistant manager at my dream job that I worked at for four years. Nice. And, and I remember I wrote on a post-it note, uh, God got me the job at Hot Topic. Thank you, Jesus. Like I put it on the mirror and that was like huge for me because, you know, a month prior or whatever, a couple months before that, I was blaspheming them and I was like rejecting them and everything. And um, at that moment, I believed like that was that was where he was reaching me where I was and, and prove himself to me. Yep. And I just kept reading his word. And I was like, okay, I believe you're real. I believe you answer prayers. I believe this Bible, but I'm just not ready to become a Christian yet. Like I was just like, I was like 21. I was in the clubs every night and I was just, and I was thinking, you know, maybe on my deathbed, I'll, I'll uh, surrender my life. And it's like, that's how selfish we are. You know, it's like, we yep. want to, want to have our cake and eat it too. And it's like, I want to live, for the world and then i want to get my get into heaven card at the end of my life and um so i was kind of in this space where i believed, but i wasn't ready yet and then uh i i became kind of locally famous because of a clothing line i had that models all over the world were wearing and bands like chelsea grin and dr acula and attila and soldier boys click and different people were wearing this and um and then i started uh did i start that yeah i started performing shows and stuff in a rap group but i can't i think this happened before that but yeah people were starting to my, my phone would just be blowing up every day like when i was getting off work i'd have like three or four people asking me like hey there's this party that party so i'm like yo i get to choose where i want to go but this one particular night in april of uh, 2005 nobody was available everybody was like out of town, hanging out with a girl, whatever. And so that night I actually went home by myself and uh, I thought I wanted a night to myself because I was overwhelmed with friends. But this night I was just like, man, I wish I could do something. And my cousin, my, my female cousin was getting divorced from her husband. So she was, and we shared my room, two separate beds on the floor and she was asleep already because she had work and college and she was not a morning person and I couldn't wait. <laughs> I was just trying to be real quiet. So it was just me alone. And I remember I was just watching the Simpsons and, and I felt the father saying, um, why don't you pray? 
And I was like, okay. Um, you know, cause I was already, I, I'm, I'm believing in God, you know? And I was just like, okay. So I, I bowed my head and I said, I don't know what I'm praying about, but I pray for this friend, that friend, you know, anything I think about, anything I think of to pray about. And then it was like, he said, this is your moment. And I opened my eyes. I was like, Oh, I'm not ready Whoa. for that. Whoa. That must've been some random thought. That wasn't him, you know? And right when that thought came into my mind, like this isn't him, that's some random thought. It was like this eye opening smack of reality. Like you're seeking for truth. You're seeking for God. And, and he's revealing himself to you and saying, this is your moment. And you're saying, no, like now you're running away. And man, that hit me. And I was just like, it's true. I'm running. And, uh, and, and I just surrendered and I said, come into my life, you know, and I, I accept you in now. And it was like, God was so cool and personal. He was meeting me where I was. Like I didn't have to clean yep. myself up to come to him. I didn't have to say, mm -hmm. okay, I, I'm not going to go to the club. I'm going to stop drinking. I'm going to do all this. And then I'll come to you, God. Like that was what I thought I had to do. But he came to me in the pit, in that darkness. And, um, yep. and I, and I just accepted him. And I never felt God like that any other time. Like it was just this experience that I felt. And he gave me, like my mom had that vision of the, the dictionary. I had these little visions pop in my mind of my mom telling her testimony because my mindset was like, if I can believe that God's real, if I can believe the Bible's true, if I can believe he answers prayers, why can't I just believe he's saving my life right now? I was like, why can't I just believe this? And, and that's when I surrendered and he showed me my mom telling her testimony, believe in all things are possible. He showed me that magnet that I got her as a kid that said, believe in all things are possible. And he even showed me this game that I used to play called Pa Rapper the Rapper, where this little cartoon dog spins around and he says, I just got to believe. And I was like, <laughs> it was like, oh, God, man. he's just so cool and personal. And it was like, he was in this moment with me, like, yeah, I'm cool. Like I'm the reason that you even think things are funny or interesting. Or I'm the one that created it all, all your emotions and everything. And that's yep. when I was like, wow, man. And I was just so on this level with him. And so I, I remember I was going to go to bed and I was just, I, I was just trying to stay in the presence with him for as long as possible. Even when I was going to my bedroom, I was just going to lay in the blankets and just feel this. But my cousin was back there. I didn't want to wake her up. And so as I'm walking, I get to my room and I have to walk past her bed to my bed on the other side of the room <laughs> and that short 20 feet or whatever. Um, this wave of doubt hits me. What if this Ooh. is all fake? And right when I feel that thought, my whole body starts trembling like this to the point where things on the wall are rattling, dude, like picture frames are going like ding, ding, ding. And I'm wow. like, I'm going to wake up my cousin. This is my thought. Like it's all happening. In <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to wake her up. So I'm like, no, 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 I, I believe. And it's like whew, instantaneous. These tremors that were like uncontrollable just went away. And I'm telling you every step, it was like, okay, boom, went away. Next step. Oh, what if this is all fake? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I believe it was like this war for my soul at this last moment. Satan knew he was losing me. Spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare, man. Angels and demons like, no, this is fake. No, that I believe. And it was this belief. It was it was a battle of faith and fear back and forth. I finally got to my bed and I just laid there and, and just felt this presence. And, um, you know, it wasn't an overnight change for me at all. I had eight years of, of saying I was a Christian with no real fruit. I mean, I was still smoking, drinking every day, smoking weed and, and performing rap shows and stuff. And, in New Year's 20, 2011, the father really opened up my eyes about the signs of the times. I was about to move mm -hmm. to, I was about to move to California, man. Like uh, we had a video shoot at a mansion where the guy recording it was the cameraman for the Green Mile and all these reality shows on MTV and stuff. And we were starting to get sponsorships. Bud Ice was giving us beer because we were always rapping about Bud Ice and stuff. <laughs> Oh, wow. I was like, and, it, and it, I was to the point where I was like, I never paid to get into any club. I'd stand in the back of the line and the security guard would grab me and pull me in. As soon as I went in, people were like, oh, let me buy you a beer and all this. I just felt like all my dreams are coming true. And, and then it was like, 
if I move to California, this is going to happen because Soldier Boy's clique was wearing my clothes. And after I shot the music video in the air, airport at my terminal was Soldier Boy's manager, coincidentally. And, and dude, like, did a video promo with me in the airport. And I'm just like, this is so supernatural. Like, how is this? This has to be God. Like, this, this doesn't just happen. And so I was in the process of moving to California and then God opened my eyes to new world order and all that, which made prophecy real to me. Like mm. when I saw these movies about we're in the last days and stuff, I'm like, man, that's like way future stuff, but this made it so real. And, um, and I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to move to California. I'm going to get a, a good reputation with the world for my clothing line and the rap. And then I'm going to tell him about the new world order and tell him about God and all that stuff. And, um, <laughs> but he knew, he knew that that wasn't going to happen, man. Like it, I would have got sucked into the black hole. Oh yeah. Uh, because uh, all these models and stuff, they would, they would literally take pictures like wearing just the shirt and stuff like that. And it was like, you just can't mix light and dark like that. Nope. And so what's crazy is a chain of events stopped me from going. And I, and the father was like, you see how close you are to this dream. Like, if you go, it's going to happen. You got the sponsorships. You got all the people wearing it. You got all these connections. If you go, it's, your dreams are going to happen. Or you can lay it all down and follow what I have for you. Woo, I, what a choice. Yeah, dude. And I was like, wow, really? And, and it was just like, I felt like the fisherman who had the biggest catch of the day. And Jesus says, drop your nets and follow me, you know? And I was like wow, I, I'm not going to go. You know, it was a tough decision. I was literally living in a house with no furniture. It was all already in storage because I was about to move. And I called my friend who was already in California, living with his girlfriend who hooked all this stuff up out there. He was, he was calling me all the time. When you come in, man. And I, I said, right before I called, I said, uh, just let him understand, you know, let him take this easily. And I called him and I said, dude, I, some things are changing my life. Like, I just don't think I can go. I might've said right now, I don't know. I was like, I just don't think I can go out there right now or whatever. And he goes, you know, well, it's cool, man. You know, maybe we can try next year or something. And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> dude's been hounding me every day. Like, when are you going to be out here? And now he's like, maybe we can try next year. And I was just like, thank you. Thank you, father. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I'm telling you, man, I don't regret it at all because he continued to lead my path and put me in a ministry where I get to use all my gifts. See, I, I had a passion for music and, and clothing design and graphic art and making music videos and things like that. Yeah. That cool. You got a cool shirt on now. I think you probably designed it. Yep. <laughs> yep. And, um, and so now it's like he gave me those gifts, but I was using them for the world. We, we have the wow. choice know how to use these gifts and mm. and i didn't know how i could use them for the kingdom but he um uh, and the father just like showed me this really cool ministry that is called little light studios and and uh, it's really crazy because they were in california <laughs> they were at, in california at the I time like, yeah and i got invited to be on a, a commercial for a a, bit, a really well-known christian ministry because I had tattoos. I was like the only person these Christians knew. With oh tattoos. my gosh. <laughs> so uh, they needed somebody in the, the commercial to look like a worldly person. And so I went <laughs> to the commercial shoot and I get it. It was raining and I get in, I jump in the car with the, the camera guys and I start talking with them and find out this is little light studios I'm talking to. And I'm like, you guys came all the way out here from California to Chattanooga, Tennessee to shoot this commercial. And Scotty was like, oh, we moved here like four months ago. And I was like, what? I was just like, dude, I love your ministry. Like, I wish I could work there. And, and then they, they invited me to come do a little like short video. And I was like, how would you guys like to print t-shirts here? You know, I, I make t-shirts. And Scotty said, well, your machine fit right here. I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, he, the father just opened up all these doors, man. And really made the desires of my heart come true. Like nice. He, like there's nothing more fulfilling and rewarding than working for him for eternal, for things that are of eternal things. 
and now I make t-shirts, I make videos, I use all my gifts for him, man. Nice. That's the story. Well, you took care of one of the later questions, so that's cool. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's an awesome story. Right? You had the choice of huge success in the world or build the kingdom, and you chose the kingdom. So that's mad props for you on that one. I right, so this one won't this one will be a lot less extensive, <laughs> or maybe not. How I have you rec- do it now? Go ahead. I highly recommend anybody giving up their worldly dreams to, to follow what the father has for him, because it's going to be a whole lot more fulfilling. I, I can relate, brother. I can relate. Cause I'm, I'm using the gifts he's given me now to build his kingdom when I was trying to, I guess, build my own kingdom. Right. <laughs> yeah. So how, how have you benefited spiritually by your newfound understanding of the scriptures? Would you say your faith in the Messiah Yeshua has been increased? For sure. Definitely, man. Like, so when, when I accepted Christ, it was kind of this uh, churchianity thing. Like, yeah, you, you say the prayer, you invite them in, and then yep. you go to church every week, and, and whatever the pastor says is gospel. And, and there wasn't much Bible study. You know, at, at the beginning, I, me reading the Bible um, inspired me to accept Christ, and, and that, it was a, that it was like a reality but I didn't read the whole thing. And it wasn't until later that actually, well, after, after the father opened my eyes to the new world order and things like that, I was like, Whoa, we're actually in the end times. That kind of lit a fire under me. Like maybe I should study his word. Yep. And it was, it was a uh, life transforming man. Me and my current wife were living together and just studying his word. Uh, I remember the day that we were, I don't even know if it was about marriage. It was just like his word was just so convicting and, and it made me want to change it. It wasn't like a path, like some street preacher saying you're going to hell because you're homosexual or something. It was when I read his word, it, it was like, wow, I need to change this. Like this is destructive, my lifestyle. And I remember just looking at my girlfriend that was living with me and I was like, we need to get married. And she goes, yeah, we do. And it was mm-hmm. like, let's do it. <laughs> and uh, the guy that was studying with me was like, you can get married at my church any Wednesday. So I was like, this Wednesday, let's do it. And I told my mom, I'm getting married this Wednesday. And she lived a couple hours away. And she said, can you do it the next Wednesday? Because our professor at school <laughs> gave us Halloween off. So oh we got married on Halloween, October 31st. So never forget my anniversary. But it, yeah, man, when you really get in God's word, um, it's, it's like a two edged sword, man. Like it'll change your life. And I started finding out all these new truths that were not being taught in church. Yep. I don't know if that's another question or. Yeah. Yeah. Save, okay. save that one. I know, I know where yeah. you're going with that. Save that one for later. <laughs> but yeah, man. I, it caused me to, to surrender fully to him, which happened on new year's 2013. 2013 and I had an addiction. Okay. I was, I was smoking weed and drinking beer every single day all day, every day, except when I was at work. And, and they say weed's not addictive, but it is. And 30, I know, minutes, it before, is. <laughs> yeah, 30 minutes before I'd be getting off work, I'd be nauseous and it would magically go away when I drink my beer. Mm. And then any day that I didn't have weed, I spent the whole day irritable looking for the weed. So that shows you, but yep. New Year's 2013, I, I was trying before New Year's 2013, I, I was starting to get convicted about my lifestyle and the things I was doing. And I was like, um, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut back. I'm not going to smoke today. And every time I'd say that, Satan would send some minion to my house, dude. And it'd be like, you want to smoke? Yeah, dude, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Free beer, free weed. <laughs> and I'd fail every time. And so I remember, I remember realizing, like, if I say I'm cutting back, I'm still holding on. That's not severing ties. That's like, I mean, imagine if you told, if, if you started dating your wife and you're like, I'll, I'll cut back on seeing this chick. It's like, no, you're <laughs> yeah. going to cut ties, you know? Excuse you. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> and so I realized I, I'm not letting go. I'm, I'm, I'm still holding on if I'm just cutting back. And I, I remember telling the father on New Year's 2013, I said, my New Year's resolution is I, I want to be free from this, but I cannot do it. I fail every time. I'm yep. giving you permission to take this out of my life. Please free me from this. Mm. 
And I woke up the next day without a single withdrawal, man. It was supernatural. And I'm telling you, that was the worst part, you know, is the withdrawals and stuff. But every day, temptation for two years, of course, every day yep. the tempter doesn't go anywhere. Nope. But that gave me an opportunity to pray and to press into him and, and get victory over sin every day. I'd be pumping gas and a glowing beer sign in my face. And I'm like, Father, please help me not to go in there and, and get a beer. And I'd drive home without a brown bag in my lap in victory. Nice. And that was because every day now I become dependent upon him. And, mm. and the father's not a thief. He's, he's knocking on the door of your heart. He's not batter ramming in doors. You know, he's, he's knocking, hoping you'll answer. And, and he's not going to steal things from your, that you're cherishing. He's not going to take things out of your life. You're cherishing. He's not a thief. And so if, if you're cherishing something, he's giving you free will. And so I had to reach a place where I was like, you can have it, please take it. And he, he will not, um, he will not turn his ear from a prayer like that. He will answer that prayer. Nice. All right, so since you're talking about addictions, I gotta, I gotta give you some props and I was speaking for my wife too. She's not in the room, but so mm-hmm. like, uh, 2020, early 2020, the father delivered me and my lovely bride of an entertainment addiction Mm. And your and Little Light Studios was instrumental, and in, some of the videos we were watching was instrumental in helping us overcome that addiction. So, so wow. I just want to, I just want to give you a virtual nook. <laughs> so that that's awesome. So, just want to give that little testimony there to boost you up a little bit. <laughs> do, you, do you recommend uh, your viewers uh, any certain video? Was there anyone that just like really opened your eyes or anything? Oh, look what I got here. <laughs> Oh, you got the DVD. Check it That's out. The whole collection right there. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for this, brother. Welcome, so, bro. actually, actually, I'll show this real quick, real quick. So, uh, we were, a few, a few hours ago, we were hanging out with the an older couple that we know. Maybe she'll be watching this later. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> but she's a real nice lady. So, we were watching the magic. We brought up, we were hanging out, drinking the, some coffee with her, and she, we brought up the Magic Kingdom documentary and she's like oh we should check that out so we went down and watched that and they ended up watching one of your newer videos about tomorrow i think tomorrow war and how they oh, were yeah. against the sabbath keepers oh wow yeah but uh you said instrumental just some of the the videos exposing disney and the occult they were really helpful to me and candace because i mean like literally i work i used last year i worked at a hospital so i work a long 12-hour shift I come home, you know, you're tired, you're exhausted mentally, take a shower, eat dinner, sit down. And it wasn't, hey, honey, do you want to pray or read scripture? It's, hey, what do you want to watch tonight? You want to watch a show or a movie? And so, and the father was working on us hard and help us to overcome that addiction. And some of your videos were like, just hit us hard. So wow. props for that. All right. As, so, it's, you know, as, as believers, we, we can get rid of a lot of those real external sins in your face stuff. Like, you know, I don't cuss, I don't drink, I don't fornicate, I don't smoke, you know, I don't do any of that, but entertainment, man, it it affects us all. It's, we're so, it's like a ubiquitous type thing. It's all around. Like I said, pumping, pumping gas, TV in your face, dude. I had the Adams family trailer just blasting in my face while I'm pumping gas. And then I'm, you know, I'm driving away with a bump, 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 bump. You know, it's like. Uh Uh-huh, send your head. Yeah, it's like, dude, you can't escape it. And whether you're just trying to get some groceries and you're hearing some song from the past brings up all these memories from (laughs) that time period in life, you know. And, and yeah, that's something that a lot of people just think, well, you know, it's it's fiction. It doesn't really, it's okay. Nope, get you right there. (laughs) They don't realize the power of it and. Um, I don't know if this is a time to kind of talk about one of those documentaries or anything, but you got it. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, one of one of them's called Pseudology, and it's the science behind media. It's it's uh, uh, you can't you can't it's on here. You can't see it. <laughs> Sorry. So, so content aside, and and spiritual beliefs or anything, we we reached out to these psychologists, uh, doctors, neurologists, you know pediatricians and we said they didn't know we were a ministry at all we just said we're making a documentary about raw science what happens to your brain when you're watching tv or whatever 
And they said, basically, you're in a dark room watching a flickering light. That's putting you in a hypnosis state. That's, a, yep. uh, that's how hypnosis works. They have you stare at a blinking light. And I said, so once you're in this state of hypnosis, your frontal lobe shuts down and you go into alpha mode. And now your frontal lobe is where you do all your reasoning. And so now whatever yep. message is coming out of that TV is going right into your brain. It's passing through that filter system and it's just going right in. And that's why advertising, that's why companies will spend millions, if not billions of dollars for a short couple seconds commercial because they're getting the payback. It works. Oh, yeah. They know that advertising works. So once you get somebody to understand when they see that information and they see it's, it's science and it makes sense, it's all backed up they'll admit, okay, yeah, yeah, media is powerful and it can, uh, you know, cause people to buy things and all that. And then you say, well, what's in all these movies that you're watching? Same stuff. <laughs> yeah, when you start looking into it, you know, God, God's blasphemed constantly. Christianity is mocked and ridiculed. Satan is made to look like, uh, you know, like the show Lucifer. He's sexy, he's rich, and it's just like, Satan is always glamorized in some kind of way. Uh, yeah, everything's inverted. Yeah, and so it's like, and people say, well, you know, me watching this isn't going to change my belief in him. Well, the thing is, is the Bible says I was setting a wicked thing before my eyes. Yep. If we turn the TV off every time a commandment was broken, dude, the TV would never be on. I'm <laughs> telling you, like, I... I don't even watch like mainstream entertainment. I, I still get screen time. I watch documentaries and I watch YouTube videos and things like this. But every time I like walk past mainstream media, literally within seconds, I'm cringing because I'm like blasphemy, uh, violence, murder, sex. It's like constant. And so we, yeah. we really have to, people say it's fiction. It doesn't affect you, but Christ spoke everything in fiction. Every sermon was a fictional story called a parable. Yep. Because he knew the power of storytelling. And and every vision that the father gave in in the Bible was, you know, beast rising out of the sea or skinny cows eating fat cows or a harlot riding <laughs> a beast or a woman standing on the moon clothed with the sun. Those aren't literal. Those are stories. Those are parables, fictional stories that that tell something. And so Satan knows the power of storytelling and he's, oh, yeah. used, he's got the, an unlimited budget and <laughs> yep. showing it in a way that's uh, captivating for and everyone. effective. Yeah. And so uh, if we truly believe what the Bible says that Satan is going to raise up an army in the last days, the whole, he's going to gather the whole world to fight against the coming of Christ. How is that going to happen? Well, all the leaders, all the dictators and tyrannical leaders of the world used media propaganda. That's how Hitler convinced a whole nation that this type of person is not even human. And Satan sees that and says, oh, wow, I can't. Well, I mean, Satan inspired that. But it's like now we're at a time where media is a whole lot more infiltrative than it was back in Hitler's day. Now everybody has the whole library in their pocket you know we're yep. all being it yeah <laughs> so it's not a, the technology itself isn't bad we can use it for this we yep. can use it for the gospel to the world but we have an enemy out there and he's using it big time yes sir on a different different topic or whatever have you ever personally experienced or witnessed a bona fide miracle mm. in your life <laughs> I mean, my freedom from addiction was a miracle for sure. Yeah, sure. Um, my my mother, when I was when I was young, uh, she would we would, she would walk me to I don't know if it was preschool, kindergarten. We would walk a couple blocks, and she my parents were separated at the time, and she lived like in the top. It was like three stories high. It was just stairs, do 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 these wooden stairs, and it had got through raining and she the the stairs are slippery and she slipped from the top one and just like hit her butt all the way down like do 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 all the way down and wow. flipped like three discs in her back and man Ooh. she was like bedridden like my dad would have to help her go to the bathroom and everything and dang uh we heard about 
uh, a woman that was. So this is this is where it gets tricky because it's like, I know there's a lot of false things that happen in churches and stuff, and and we talk about some of that on our channel. You mean like and false it, signs, and wonders? Yeah, yeah, false yeah. signs and wonders, and tongues, and all these different things, and. But there was, we heard that there was a lady coming and she had a healing, healing ministry. And my mom went up front and this lady came up to her and laid her hands on her head. And she goes, the lady like acted like she felt my mom's pain or something. And my mom fell back and stuff. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not advocating any of this stuff. This is just, this is what happened. And my mom, it wasn't like she jumped up and was healed, but rapidly she was healed within days or weeks. And, and the doctors said that she would be like that unless she had spinal surgery. Like there was no way out of that. And, and although I don't agree with everything that was happening in that church, I believe that the father was here, was recognizing her faith in him yes. and, 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 uh, you know, healed her through her faith by your, your faith has made you well. And nice. I think that's what happened. And I, I've seen that. And my cousin at that same church had his, arm in a cast and just stretched it out and was was out of the cast i'm curious have you <laughs> seen any <laughs> yes i was man i didn't know you're gonna throw it back at me <laughs> I didn't know you, man i was gonna ah uh, i was gonna do my own testimony i don't know if i should share that now or not yeah just save it bro. All right, all right. yeah i was gonna do like an episode just myself talking you should i don't want to shut you down like that but just for just the whole <laughs> The anticipation, whatever. What does your family like to do on Sabbath? We all like to enjoy. Man, like today, we uh, I I had a a couple of water jugs, and we went out to this beautiful place where there's it's like natural stairs, like the Father's beautiful creation. It's like a oh, stairs waterfall, and so oh, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's like water like an inch deep that you're stepping in and it's all mossy and there's like stairs that go up into the woods and there's natural water coming out and i get spring water there and i fill nice. up my, my jugs and i just drink it straight out and me and my friend he took his acoustic guitar and he was playing the guitar and the girls my daughter and his daughter were playing and we were catching salamanders and like wow look at this <laughs> guy and there was like six or seven i mean we just saw salamanders like crazy out there and we're just holding them and and observing the father's creation it's like look at this guy you know and, and my friends playing worship music and uh you know so we enjoy we we try to get out in his creation and yeah and, yeah uh, we like <laughs> to you know definitely read scriptures and, and pray together and things like that but nice definitely just not clocking into work not making other people work and and spending a lot of time with family and fellowship. Nice. Sometimes we'll watch some little Bible cartoons and stuff like that. <laughs> For the kids. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here's the question that you wanted to talk about earlier. How long have you been studying scriptural cosmology? Hmm. That's a good question. Uh, I wonder how long it's been. I mean, I, I sometimes I get those memories on Facebook and it's like five years ago and I'm like, oh, wow, wow, really? Dang. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I think, I think, yeah, probably about five years or so. I, I remember the first time my friend was like, you know, we were both always talking about conspiracy theories and stuff. And he goes, <laughs> dude, man, the earth's flat. You need to look at it. I was like, man, that's just, so <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah. dude, I'm not going to waste my time, man. Like, that's just <laughs> like, we got drones and all this stuff. And, uh, I remember I started looking into it, of course, to shut it down like everybody does. Yep. And I'd say for about eight months straight, I was like, okay, both models work. I can see, yeah, that would, that would work on the biblical model. That would work on this heliocentric model. Yep. And then as I kept looking at it, you know, because I would see things like, okay, this proves a flat earth is what they'd say. And I said, no, that works on both. But over time, it was like the only model that began to crumble was the heliocentric globe model. Yeah, I was like, this cannot work on here anymore. Like I, for a while, I was seeing that they both work, but now this is not working on the heliocentric. How can you see the same stars, same constellations every night, making perfect circles overhead when we're supposed to be corkscrewing around in an ever-expanding universe? Oh 
I'm Woo! like, dude, you've never seen this thing. <laughs> I was just like, that doesn't work this way. And and how yeah. can you see the sun set behind a mountain that's supposed to be covered by 300 feet of curvature or something? It's just like, that doesn't work <laughs> on a heliocentric globe, you know? It's, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'd say about five, I don't know. It, it's hard to say, but probably about four or five years, I guess. Nice. Yeah, the firmament did it for me. Like, that disproves it like crazy. Yeah, I mean, when when I discuss it with people, I say, if you want to just go with straight scripture, I mean, it says that he, that the, the firmament divides the waters from the waters, and that the sun, moon, and stars are in the firmament. So, <laughs> how does that describe a ever-expanding vacuum where you know, one one light is only a couple thousand miles away, and the other light is ninety three million miles uh, away. Ay, ay, ay. And I was like, it, and it, I said, you know, if it's really a firmament, the which has the word firm in it, and it's <laughs> solid <illustrated>, structure, <laughs> illustrated as a solid glass like structure that's dividing the waters from the waters, and and all the stars really look like LED lights underwater. Yep. Um, to me, that just does it, man. You cannot, you cannot believe what we're shown on TV and stuff. And Oy. with what scripture? Yeah, how did NASA get through the water above the firmament? <laughs> <laughs> A lot but, of uh, oxygen tanks and scuba gear. So this kind of relates to that question. I, I think you're really gonna like this question. You want to spend a few minutes talking about your your baby documentary, Disclosed? Oh yeah, yeah. I know that. Sure. I know that's like a lifelong journey smashed into a a lifelong research smashed into a documentary for you it really was man so i've been wanting well so like i said all my life i've been intrigued by the paranormal as a kid i was checking out books on ghosts and aliens and i was a believer in aliens for sure and i used to collect all the stickers and alien head stickers and action figures (laughs) i had them hanging from my ceiling i had glow in the dark stars with little strings hanging down with UFOs and stuff. Oh man. And, and when I was a kid, I saw a movie called uh, fire in the sky and it was based on a true story and it freaked me out. But I was like, I was so intrigued, but terrified at the same time of aliens. And even when I accepted Christ became a Christian, there was a show that came out called ancient aliens. Oh like, man. <laughs> Christians didn't have answers for me about the alien thing. And I'd hear, they'd say things like, well, if there's alien life out there, then Christ had to die for them or something. It like, they had all these weird th- beliefs. Huh. But I was like, I, you know, this universe is so vast. It's, it's crazy narcissistic to think that we're alone. And, and there's too many sightings and everything, you know, too many stories, people having the same encounters and stuff. And so when Ancient Aliens came out, it really put the pieces together for me. I mean, it was like, yeah, when Moses was following a pillar of fire out of the wilderness, that was a beam of a UFO. <laughs> that made sense. Like, okay, oh, if, if the father sends angels to, you know, he likes using other people. You know, he uses angels to do certain jobs. And the angels yep. are like, man, I wish I could share the gospel with humans, but that's the human's responsibility. So I was like, well, if the father would send angels to give a person a message, then why wouldn't he s- communicate with aliens on another planet and say, Hey, use your technology to fly down there and help lead these people out of the wilderness. And I just thought they were, you know, other beings that lived on other worlds that God used as an agent. And uh, to me, it totally made sense. And I believed that for a while until so 2005, so 2012 ish is when I, so for like seven years, I was believing ancient aliens and stuff. <laughs> and I didn't even understand stuff about evolution and all that. I didn't have all the answers with that either. I thought maybe God could have used evolution uh, during the creation process, which is just illogical completely. But yep. in, in the, that same awakening about new world order and stuff, was an awakening about what this whole alien phenomenon was all about. And so ever since from that point on, I was like, I want to make a documentary about this. And uh, I guess it just wasn't, the timing wasn't right, you know, because right now 
is the perfect timing when yes you know, he's coming on mainstream television saying we're not alone we're seeing things and it's not ours it's not theirs so it must be something else they're saying who's operating these vehicles dude we are about to be set up for something right now they are prepping us priming us yes for first contact or whatever and so i finally got this chance working for little light studios to make a 35 minute documentary and that was hard to put it in 35 minutes because this could have been a three to four hour i don't know if you can see it yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) this could have been a three to four hour documentary with all the things that i wanted to include but i wanted it to be uh short enough that people could share it and people wouldn't get discouraged by seeing four hours so oh yeah you see that you're like nope i ain't watching that <laughs> yeah 35 minutes i hope everybody can can afford that time and it it's to me it's vital information this is yep satan's grand master deception this is how he's going to unite all the world together including atheists because atheists don't believe in anything supernatural yeah but you ask a lot of atheists they're gonna say yeah i believe in aliens huh, so interesting i believe i believe that uh without giving too much away i guess the the story is i believe they're gonna come and have answers for us they're gonna you know the bible talks about beings fearful sights in the heavens that are gonna make men's hearts fail them for fear and that three frog-like demonic beings are going to unite the militaries of the world to battle against the coming of Christ. (laughs) And it's like, wow, this seems like it's matching up. And we got the military literally saying there's aliens. So, I mean, uh, we have a space force now. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Which means we got a military branch that's creating weapons pointing towards the heavens. And and prophecy tells us that the militaries of the world are going to fight the coming of Christ. So I really think that's where we're headed. And, and dude, man, if anybody is doubting the Bible right now and these days, like <laughs> you're missing something, man. It ain't the time for that. <laughs> Prophecy is just come is like unrolling right in front of us. Right in front of us. Totally, totally. So I guess we can wrap this up pretty soon. So I guess, let's see, let me hit you with this one. Do you have any current projects you're working on right now that are helping to build y'all's kingdom? Uh. Well, we have the weekly show every week and that keeps us kind of busy because we're kind of shorthanded, but I do want to make a documentary real soon about who is the beast and what is his mark. To me, that's, that's a passion of mine because there's a lot of attention right now oh, on, yep. on a certain thing that goes here go, right here. Body. goes right there. <laughs> yeah. A certain thing uh, beep, that goes into the body. And, and I, I think, and I, you know, this might be news to you too. I don't know, but I believe that Satan is a master deceiver and he's got everyone's attention on he's misdirecting people. He's putting things out that look so obvious. Like, yeah, it's even called zero six, zero six, zero six. Yeah, man. It's like, there, there's so much in your face that people are like, this has to be it, but it's supposed to be the most deceiving thing to hit yep. the world. If it's supposed to be the most deceptive thing, yet all everybody's attention is on it, that's a misdirection. Yep. And to me, when I when I read the Bible and I'm looking at this mark that's in your hand and in your forehead, it's that that word, I don't know how to pronounce it, off. It's H two two six. I guess it's off. Oh my wife was talking about oath, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And the word it's it's the same word that's translated sign and seal sign seal and mark are all interchangeable yep and in the old testament this word off or oath h226 is the same exact word as the mark that was put upon cain and the i was same just exact thinking word that. that and the same exact word for his sabbaths are a sign so this yes. word sign and seal is the translators just uh it was the same word it was h226 but the translator said well, here we're going to say Mark and here we're going to say sign, but it's the same yeah. word. <laughs> and, and the, the word says that his commandments, which are in our hearts are to be a Mark H226 between our eyes and in our hand. 
Now the Pharisees took this very literal and legalistic yep. and started tying boxes of scripture to their head and stuff. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. But I don't think the father was saying tie some scripture to your head. He was saying, believe it with your mind and do it with the works of your hand. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might or whatever. Yep. So I believe that the mark is a counterfeit of that. The mark is about worship. They worship the beast and his image. So this we're, we're looking at a one world religion to come soon, a one world universal coexist religion that I believe is going to be a conglomeration of new age and Catholicism. Catholicism means universal. New yes. Age is all about coexist. <laughs> you see the Pope going to these United Nations things saying he's got the answers to climate change and all this. And so I think real soon we're going to start seeing laws that are going to be enforcing some yep. kind of religion that you're not allowed to go against and the thing about in the forehead is there's going to be a lot of people that say oh yeah this is i believe this it's all about love and unity and peace i believe it i got yep. the mark in my forehead but there's going to be other people who say you know i, I don't believe this is biblical this this isn't this isn't true but I got to feed my family. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to obey this law of this religious law, even though I don't believe it, I'm taking it in the hand. See, Yah says, even if you, okay, so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't believe in Nebuchadnezzar's statue, but they could have simply said, hey, we'll, let's just bow just so we don't die. They didn't. Nope. They wouldn't take it in the forehead and they didn't even simply bow their bodies before this image to save their life. Yep. So that if they did, that would have been, you know, that wasn't the mark, but it's, it's the same. Um, it's the same analogy or whatever. It's the same. If they, if they believed it or if they did it, you know, it's the forehead and the hand. Yeah. So I don't know if you, if you looked into that or believe that way or I've looked into some of that stuff. So I know you're talking about, yeah. So th this was an awesome interview, brother. Where's the best place people can find you online? If they want to reach Just out to you. Go to YouTube and check out Little Light Studios. You'll see a, a light bulb. And uh, um, we have a website, littlelightstudios.tv, not .com. And it's Little Light Studios, plural. But we have these cool shirts, if you like that. We got and this is where you can, find, you can find this there, too. Uh, there we go. Yeah, these, we, have, uh, <laughs> we have multiple documentaries that are not on YouTube we have chopped parts of the documentaries and put them on YouTube. So if you just binge watch YouTube, you'll basically see those documentaries. But if you want to see like pseudology in one sitting, or we actually did one on anime recently. What's the one on karate? What's the name called, of that one? Uh, oh man. I can't remember. Does it have dragon in the name? It does have dragon. Uh, <laughs> are you kidding me? Oh dragon, man. Dragon revealed. Yeah, that was a great one because there's a lot I of people. I was about to say Enter the Dragon. That's why I was like, what is this thing? Because there's a lot of believers that are into martial arts and they don't realize that once you get to the top, it's it's pretty demonic. Yeah, so the guy who um, basically the project was based on this guy's testimony who was an instructor for many years, a black belt martial arts instructor, and he started realizing it's like a secret society. Like when he was in – you know, just in the regular ranks, like he didn't know what the black belt people were doing. Like they were going in a different room and stuff. And he's like, I want to be able to do like these ancient uh, Chinese men, like jumping up on an egg and it's not breaking and stuff. You know, he's like, I want to do this supernatural stuff. And so he finally got to the black belt and he remembers his master being like, now you're going to get to see all that stuff you wanted to. And there was a whole ritual when he went in there, candles and, and all this stuff. And, and it still didn't click with him because he was still kind of on the fence with his uh, spirituality and stuff. But once he got back to his faith in Christianity, he was like, the veil just fell off. And he was like, you cannot separate this stuff from, from the spiritual aspect of it. Nope. So he's been a guest on our show for the new age and things like that. You can't separate yoga from the spiritual aspect and, nope. and same with martial arts. That's a very so I, interesting documentary. Yeah, it's it's a good one. It was very revealing to me. So so I'll leave the description to your little light studios and your personal channel in the description. So 
I appreciate your time, brother, and you have an amazing rest of your evening. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much for having me on, man. It's been a it's been an honor. Yes, have sir. You too.